Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 6th grade concept of data, specifically how we can create and interpret relative frequency tables and we'll do it in 5 minutes or less. So you see over here on the left we have a basic table. We've been working with tables for many many years now. So one thing that we're going to need to do in 6th grade is we're going to need to create what we call a relative frequency table. And all that means is that our data is going to look slightly different. You're going to see information. It might be in a tele chart or it might be just in a basic uh, table like this. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to add a little bit of something to this. And we're going to call it the percentage. The relative frequency is just a different way to represent data. Right now we have a, a jar of marbles and there's five blue, eight yellow, seven red, 10 green, 13 purple, and seven pink. So we know that purple's got the most. We know that blue's got the least, but relative to each other, how big are they? Well, typically, we like to represent that with percents. And so 100% means all of the marbles. So what we need to do first is figure out how many marbles there are altogether. And that's going to come from simply adding them up. And what we have is we have a total of 50 marbles. So 50 marbles equals all of the marbles. And what we want to do is we want to create a relative frequency of each of these. So 5 out of the 50 is blue, 8 out of the 50 is yellow, and so on. And what you're going to see is that once we have these fractions here, now we can divide, we can make decimals, and then turning from a decimal to a percent is fairly simple. Sometimes, though, you might be given a denominator that is easy to work with. Notice how our denominator is 50. Well, if I want to multiply both the top and the bottom of each of these by 2, what that's going to do, and I'm just going to do that all the way down, that is going to give me an equivalent fraction that is going to be easy to work with, 10 hundredths. And so 10 hundredths equals 10 hundredths, 0 0.1, and if I want to make that a percent, we're just going to move over twice, 1, 2, and that's going to make 10%. So that's an easy way to think about this. If you have an easy denominator to work with, such as 50, you're just going to double it. This is going to be 16 hundredths, which equals 0 0.16. Move the decimal over twice to make it a percent, and so you see how we're just going to double it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with the rest here. Let's get 7, doubled is 14, and this is 20, this is 26, and this is 14. You know you are correct if you add all of these up, and these need to equal 100%. Now that we have our data that looks like this, you might be asked a question. You might be asked, how much larger is the green than the yellow, or which of these marbles is closest to 15% of the total or closest to 20% of the total, you're going to get some questions that are asked in percents and you need to change them in percents. One thing that you might need to keep in mind is the mode. Remember the, the mode is the one that is chosen the most. And that's something that you learned last year and even in fourth grade. And so in this case, the mode is simply going to be the one that shows the most, so it will be a purple. Now, let's give you a chance to try it out. Sometimes you might see information in a simple tally format. So go ahead and take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can make a relative frequency table with this information. Imagine that you rolled a six-sided die 25 times, and this is what you came up with. Once you get your relative frequency table with percents, unpause the video, and we'll check our work. Hopefully you started with something like this. You turned all of these amounts into numbers like I have on my table over here in this column. And then you added everything up and you notice that the total was 25. So what I did is I just rewrote these as fractions out of 25. Remember always to look to see if there's a way you can make your denominator easily into 10, 100, or 1,000. And if you multiply 25 by 4, you're going to get 100. So really, this 2 out of 25 is going to equal 8 hundredths because I multiplied top and bottom by 4. And 8 hundredths is going to be 8%. So what I could do is I can simply take my amount and I can multiply each by 4 
and you're going to get these easy numbers to work with and these are all the percents that you should have.